and here we go. Okay, so good morning, everybody. And uh, uh, today we'll try to continue the discussion, the presentation of the various types of uh, prototypes. Um, I will restart again from the paper prototype that yesterday we saw uh, quite uh, so uh, quickly. Uh, since uh, it's one of the jobs uh, that we will have to do, so it's better to understand their features and their characteristics uh, uh, better. Um, basically, uh, the, the, the key points uh, here in, in paper prototypes uh, is uh, we are sketching, so they're uh, again uh, using the, the, um, the instrument of sketches uh, uh, for user interfaces uh, and for the various uh, um, types of user interfaces that may happen, may appear uh, inside your application. Uh, so we could also go into the level of details of the buttons of the menus of the drop downs and so on, dialog boxes and so on. And uh, we may be more or less uh, say sophisticated uh, as we saw in the video uh, about um, uh, the level of, uh, of detail and of customization that we want to offer uh, in, in preparing the prototype. Of course, we should not we should not uh, spend uh, uh, several days in building uh, a very complex prototype, uh, uh, because as we said yesterday, it's better to have uh, uh, many prototypes, uh, uh, maybe of lower quality or uh, not not so sophisticated, uh, to test uh, separate different uh, ideas. So, so one one mistake we we often tend to do is that we have one idea we think is the best one, and we go forward with this. Uh, we should uh, force ourselves to design an idea and then stop, go back and try to design a different solution to the same task, a different way of executing the same task, and then stop, stop again and think whether we may have a third option and so on. So this is uh, the way in which uh, we may generate a okay, new solution, we may generate uh, um, alternatives and only then we can evaluate which alternative is better than uh, than which other one. Hmm. Um, interacting with a piece of paper may seem strange at the beginning, but uh, it's not much different from you know pointing on to a tablet. So it's just a, a surface where you click, and uh, of course the paper doesn't uh, uh, is not dynamic, doesn't change, but uh, we will have an operator, okay, um, that will. Uh, uh, modify or change the the the, the paper prototype uh, that is the sketch that is shown in every moment according to the user action okay so we have one person uh, that is needed for simulating the computer's operation it should not be the same person trying the the, um, the prototype uh, to change uh, the pages mm -hmm. uh, because really we have uh, this person using the prototype should really in psychologically feel that they, they are like using the system and even if they see that it's just paper even if there's another person that will change the, the pieces but they should not be the ones to change the pieces especially because uh, uh, at this point uh, the let's say the computer simulator knows what is the behavior of the system uh, because it knows that when you click on that button then i need to pull a different screenshot and so the operation of the system, that the system state is known by the operator that simulates the computer. It, but the same state is not known at the beginning uh, to the user because the user needs to make their own mental model um, to use the system or during uh, the use of the system. So they really should be separate persons, okay? And uh, uh, in some cases, there are some effects uh, that are not easy to show on the paper, okay? Maybe uh, um, a sound feedback thing, some, some sounds that may appear. And of course, the paper cannot do that, but the, the, the simulator, okay, the person can, can fake those, okay? Or if something is supposed to, I don't know, vibrate, like you give a vibration, of course, the person could shake the paper or could maybe shake the table or whatever. Uh, it, it thinks uh, useful for conveying that sense of, of feedback, for example, uh, or an animation. Okay, of course, in paper cannot draw down, but you can just uh, 
tell it okay at this point this will appear slowly for example uh, so that uh, it helps uh, the user to to imagine the real appearance of the of the interface mm -hmm. Um, the key points here are that uh, a paper prototype has a very low fidel fidelity in look and feel. Okay, so we don't have uh, nice colored icons, we don't have nice fonts, we don't have pixel perfect spacing, uh, we don't have uh, shadows and whatever, uh, and lines will be hand drawn, will be wavy, will be incomplete. Uh, and so, from the graphical point of view, it's very low fidelity, but it should be. Uh, should present an high fidelity in the depth uh, of the interaction. So in the kind of information that we exchange, in which actions are allowed at a given point. So what are the, uh, the active buttons, what are the active menus at this point in the interaction and what happens if I click on them. So uh, this depth in, in fidelity is of course uh, uh, due to the fact that we will try to um, draw all the relevant contents on the mock-up and uh, at the same time the person that is simulating the back end has a lot of knowledge mm, uh, to know how the system will react mm, would react in some way so unlike a storyboard where there's only one story to be told and the person tries to follow the story here the story will be told by the user because it's the user who chooses uh, where to go uh, in many cases, we are uh, using paper prototypes uh, for uh, simulating a task. Mm -hmm. So imagine we, dis we would find a task, uh, you know, register a new user or send a message or uh, find, uh, uh, I don't know, the, the closest uh, person um, registering the system or whatever. So we describe a goal to the user and we know that there is a task, a sequence of actions that the user may do to reach that goal. And we let the user experiment with the system and check whether the user is actually using the right functions in the right order, if the user finds problems or difficulties in finding the right button, in finding the right uh, sequence of, of operations to reach the goal. Okay, so it's an, it's an instrument to test whether the tasks that we had in mind for reaching a goal are correctly represented in the interface. Uh, we decided that the system should uh, allow the user to reach a given goal. Okay, we plan the task for doing that. We decide, okay, the user should first do this, do that, and do that. We prepare the user interfaces for each of the steps. I need a dialog window, I need some button, I need some input form. So it's only in our design side. We designed a system that should allow the user to execute this task and therefore to reach that goal, that final goal. Okay, but we don't know whether the our intention of describing the task and describing the sequence of steps uh, needed by the task, we don't know whether our intention is clear to the user uh, unless they try it, until they try it. Okay, uh, so that's why. Uh, that's one of the of the of the possibility for using a paper prototype. We are designing some sketch of the user interface. We are designing a so this interface could still be uh, primitive, incomplete. Uh, it's fine at this stage, but at least the sta the steps, hmm, the task uh, say sequence uh, should already be clear to us at this stage, and at only if the tasks uh, task sequence is clear, then we can create these prototypes because we know which are the steps uh, that we are we are trying to support. And after we know that, uh, you know, that the material for creating a, a paper prototype is very very simple. So you go to I don't know to to Tiger and you you can you may buy everything uh, you need um, uh, for for creating a paper prototypes. Uh, paper and pens, uh, pens of different colors, uh, pens and pencils, uh, um, and uh, post-its are also very useful to represent uh, pop-up windows uh, or something that may appear or disappear, so something that may be positioned or removed. Um, and uh, we also have, uh, if you want, uh, some libraries, uh, some stencils, uh, some libraries of, of symbols 
that uh, represent uh, the symbols that we normally find uh, in a user interface. So um, you can find the library with all the shapes uh, of, I don't know, the iPhone, uh, the iPhone selector. So the how uh, button looks like in the iPhone, how uh, um, a date selector looks like in the iPhone, uh, how the keyboard looks like on maybe on Android again, and um, and so on. So in many cases, we may have also templates, let's say, of the components that we need. A text area will be the same. So the same component will be reusable in different uh, uh, different times. Uh, we make some photocopies and we cut uh, and we use them uh, in, in different parts. So actually, it's a very uh, it's a easy activity to do. We don't need to do anything uh, too precise, uh, too perfect. Uh, but at least we should uh, uh, put the right amount of information uh, then, then we, uh, that we expect uh, that is the information that is needed during that task. Um, I'm using this word task uh, many times over just to remember ourselves that we are designing the user interaction. So we are deciding and preparing which task the user can do with the system. Mm -hmm. And so it's easier to, to think about uh, this page is here because the user needs that for performing a task, not just be because I like it or because uh, uh, it was nice to have it. Okay, Every uh, page or resource or, or content is functional to a goal and should be included in at least one task. Otherwise, it's useless. So we don't need to design it. Okay. Um, okay, so these are the main uh, uh, advantages of, of paper prototyping, which are the same in general as any other prototyping techniques. Uh, so it's quick and easy to make. Uh, and also the interesting part is also easy to make changes. So if something, we, if we discover that something is wrong, maybe the name of the label on a button is difficult to understand, okay? We can change it on the fly just uh, have a uh, write a, uh, correct it and write it on paper the new name of the button so that maybe on the sec when the second user comes over you will already find that uh, basic mistake already corrected hmm? and uh, so also during the test uh, remember user testing the users could be other users but also the first testing should be inside the design group so we are using it ourselves and we are maybe correcting it uh, as we go. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so this, the, and it is also a way to involve in this part, uh, non-programmers, okay? Because maybe they are, they are less constrained by what they know will come next, what, are, what they know that will be easier or more difficult to do. And so they are less, uh, you know, uh, uh, oriented towards predefined uh, solutions and um, and of course we, we you may also have support from a larger group of people that may we will help you hmm? because you don't need any any coding you just need people with an experience in using other interfaces and trying re to reproduce what are the interfaces that we need hmm? okay so we already asked so some some picture you see when we I were discussing about stencils, so this is an example of a stencil for an iPhone interface. So it's just a, a, a piece of cardboard or, or plastic with holes with the right shapes. Then we help you, you know, to draw the, the shapes of this interface with the right size. So you just go there and transfer the, the, the picture by, by following the, the, the holes that are cut into this piece of plastic. Okay, so it will make it faster basically so you don't need you need to have a, a lot of uh, uh, say a good end drawing uh, but uh, it, it will already give you the dictionary so these are the icons that may appear and give you a, a faster way of uh, of including them into your prototype uh, it's always good to have a, a sort of a frame like here or like there to give the context so this is a tablet. This is the screen of a computer. This is a screen of an ATM machine, for example. This is a big screen of your TV. This is, and given the context of the user, the user then will then expect 
that thing to behave in a given way. Expect the interaction to uh, hold on a given small scale, medium scale, large scale, or whatever. So this could be just uh, you know this black frame here. Uh, it's, it looks like a, no, uh, okay, a simple addition or uh, also a way to keep the paper steady, eh? not to fly away, um, but it really helps the user think about the context. And uh, also uh, the user immediately recognizes that this is the screen, this is what is on the screen, and these other pieces of paper should not be considered. The user should not look at those because they are not in the frame. So they are not currently important. They are not currently visualized. So a very uh, few hints uh, may help the user to have a better context um, understanding. Because visualization of the context and its understanding. Also here, we, are, we have an horizontal swiping of content, for example, in the, in the, in the third picture. Uh, but the, and so the user will see that there is something here, of course. Uh, but they will not consider it because the phone is there. You know? The frame of observation is very clear here. Okay, so uh, we don't need to make uh, to hide it really or to make it disappear with very complex techniques. Uh, it's just uh, he helping the user focusing on what is the real interface uh, that we are testing at the moment. Um, uh, I, and it's interesting that this sort of paper prototyping is used a lot uh, even in real products so it's not just uh, uh, I, I like very much this tweet that, that came out uh, by the last year more or less uh, by the creators of the Windows terminal so you may know that in Windows 10 there's a lot of uh, new additions and tools for for developers like uh, the um, Linux virtual machine, like the uh, Visual Studio Code, and also the, they are now including a, a proper terminal inside uh, inside Windows. And this is a is a real picture of one of the first uh, uh, design discussions that they had about in this case the toolbar of, of the of the Windows terminal. So all the discussion started with uh, a sketch here, okay? And the sketch where the user uh, try to understand, okay, what what happens uh, when I click here? What happens? Oh, sorry. When I, what happens when uh, uh, the user clicks there? Can I drag and drop and reorder the stuff? What happens if the name is too long and so on? So this is just a sketch that may be used also as a uh, actually a, a, a just a single frame. Um, paper prototype uh, this is used uh, in this case it was used not for user testing it was used for design exploration different designers around the table were discussing about uh, this picture and they took notes okay so these are the decision that they took uh, these are the questions uh, should we have it or not um, what is the behavior of this uh, expansion button where should it be there? Uh, should it be in this way or that way? Hmm? So there are all questions that at the mo at that moment they were not able to answer. So you see a lot of uh, uh, question marks here and there. And it's normal. You are just exploring. This is just one step in, in the design. And it's important because you, now we have the list of the, um, of the uh, question that you need to be answered. And uh, uh, and there will be tasks for your uh, next design steps uh, to 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 discover, to solve, and to and to decide. Mm -hmm. um, so a, a, a simple picture, but it, it's uh, it contains a lot of um, design discussion and also a lot uh, of uh, um, uh, what to say next steps uh, to explore and, and to design and to evaluate. Um, okay. Uh, these are, and this is another example with a lot of, uh, uh, no, sorry. Okay, it's, uh, it's wrong. I don't have the link for this one. Okay. Never mind. This is the video that we saw uh, yesterday you know, about a person that we did a really uh, great job in uh, in paper prototyping, but we all may also see it uh, uh, wrapped in this way. 
uh, for so in this in this first example we had a, a desktop interface uh, and we see in many cases when we have a mobile interfaces we have many screens uh, we can scroll through them you have the back sign here and uh, or uh, all, all the symbols that will remind you in this case we have some mockups for a smartwatch for example and so uh, you, you 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 got uh, you got the the idea okay what what we do uh, it's important to focus on what is on the frame at every moment and to be prepared to have all the frames available either as complete frames or just pop-ups so that we can uh, we may add to the frame and so uh, this is uh, very useful as a design exploration technique as we said but it's also uh, more useful as a first user testing technique so um, we should be careful when we test a prototype with the real users uh, to uh, to manage the interaction between the designers and the test users so imagine you have a paper prototype for your application and you invite some users to test it so how do you proceed uh, well first of all you should uh, have at least uh, three roles available or uh, they may they may be three different persons or maybe also two people can do uh, this part okay um, for testing a paper prototype you should have one member of the design team playing the computer so this person will be you know, the executor of the movement of the changes in the paper prototype and uh, he will be constrained to shut up and only do the same the actions that the real computer would give so even if this uh, simulator understands that the user is wrong is doing the wrong action they shouldn't care okay it should just respond as the computer would to be more realistic should not give any hints should not give any comments uh, should not give any suggestions to the user because the computer would not uh, in in reality give any of that uh, information back so that is just the person that will make uh, the the prototype alive hmm? uh, and nothing more in a way is not part of the of the test then we have a, what we call the facilitator so it's a person that interacts with the user and says okay this is a new application this is a new interface uh, please uh, play with that so you can interact just by clicking and so on the interface will change magically don't look at my friend this is just a, a strange version of a computer um, don't look at him or her uh, just play with the uh, with the prototype and you see that the the, 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 um, the content of the interface will change and i'm asking you to perform one task or two tasks and so on and so try to interact with this interface as if it were a real final interface and uh, maybe execute uh, task number one task number one is uh, uh, insert your name into the list of uh, i don't know uh, fam famous singers I don't know. <laughs> um, and so we have the goal we explain the goal of course we should give a, a broad understanding of what the system is supposed to do and then we describe a call and we see whether the user is able to execute the task that is needed to reach the goal. So I present the interface without describing, without teaching. Okay, I'm not supposed to do a, a, a training on the interface. Just some in broad terms, what is it for? Uh, what, uh, what goals you can reach more or less and then let them play we don't need any training because the user should be able to discover what the interface will do and we ask also the user in many cases it's very useful if the user think aloud uh, about what they're doing so instead of just uh, keeping silent and clicking buttons the user should say okay now i'm thinking i want to you know uh, enter into the application so i'm searching for my, for a login button i don't see anyone but there's one icon that has a, a profile of a user so probably is that button i will try it okay so it will be very helpful for us if the user uh, would uh, um, speak aloud what they are thinking in that moment 
so we can in a way observe better their mental processes and their understanding and what they did uh, if the users gives a wrong interpretation for an item that we have in the uh, in the ui in the in the sketch so it okay that that profile picture it thought it was for logging instead is what it's uh, intended for i don't know finding friends i don't know okay for the contacts and uh, we should not correct them we should not correct the users if they make wrong assumptions we should not correct the users if they make the wrong actions because we want to see what happens there if they can correct themselves uh, how much time do they take uh, to understand that they did something wrong uh, how much time do they take to keep on track again and so on but of course we must note every error that the uh, user does because it is really an error in the interface not the user is never wrong remember okay if if the user makes some mistake it's the fault of the system always okay there's no exception to this rule um, so but we we must let the users do mistakes to understand which mistakes are more frequent than others and you will probably discover that even with two or three users they will fall into the same mistakes that you you didn't see before when you were preparing the prototype it's normal you are thinking in a way and when you present the interface to a person that didn't participate in the creation of the interface uh, they will they have to start from zero in understanding what they need to do and maybe some interpretations that were obvious for you they are not at all obvious for them or they are just different okay um, so uh, it's better if the users uh, speak aloud what they are what they are thinking the so-called think aloud technique and if they don't uh, you should try to let them speak uh, to make them speak by asking questions okay so uh, not by helping them not by giving answers but prompting them uh, why did you click that what are you thinking now what do you think it is what do you think this this page is showing to you now some hints like this without of course uh, creating too much anxiety in the, or 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 noise okay for the user but little hints so that the user will keep talking and keep explaining and keep describing what they do mm -hmm. uh, of course uh, it should be very very clear for them that you are not testing the user but you are testing the interface so everything that they will say and also if they they are confused it's not their confusion but it's a confusion about the interface always okay so it should always be for us it's clear but maybe for the users uh, a bit more uh, they feel uh, being texted and so we meet, make them really uh, feel uh, okay confident with what they are doing uh, the only the only action that the facilitator could do when a user is uh, too wrong is too off track uh, is try to okay uh, correct them if they really cannot recover of it, or if they are stuck on some page and don't find them maybe there's a button there and they don't see it because maybe it looks like uh, i don't know an advertisement or it looks like a decoration or the the label of the button is totally different from what the user is, is expecting so after a while if you see that the user cannot uh, proceed then you can give uh, a suggestion or if the user went in a totally wrong direction then you can say okay this is not the right way let's go back of course uh, if this happen is a failure huh? it's a it's a big failure of the interface uh, and, and of course it's important to correct uh, but also we should help the user proceed so that we can we, we may complete the test uh, and and test other parts of, of the interface if some some action actually turned out to be really wrong okay so normally for uh, little mistakes uh, or mistakes that the user can correct themselves, we just observe and take note. And if the user gets totally lost, then we, we may help them and say, okay, let's try to go back and see this, could, this should have been your action. This button could do this. And then the user, it will be interesting because the user will explain to you why it did not consider that button or why they went uh, 
you know, on this portion of the website instead on, on the right one. Because they, when they did some action, they had something in mind. They had an interpretation, which is not wrong. It's different from what you, uh, you had in mind when you created the interface. So these are the important pieces of information, some assumptions or some designs that we are doing and the user find difficult, find confusing and don't, don't find their ways. And the interface is not leading the user very well in executing the task. So these are the, uh, the important information that we can gather from this user testing. Uh, not about the layout, not about the graphical aspect, because we we have we, we don't have any at, the, at this moment, but about the task, the steps, the names of the labels, the concepts that are involved in the execution of the task. So that's why we said that it was very deep in these aspects. And um, if if the facilitator is very much focused on helping the user conducting their task and especially encouraging the user, okay, proceed what you're doing and so on. Uh, it's better if we have a, a, a third person, which is just an observer, okay? A person that will take notes, take notes of the mistakes, take notes of what, uh, um, what wrong interpretation the, the user did or, or told uh, and everything that, was wrong or, and also maybe everything that went right. Okay, these actions had no, no problem. So it was well designed and so on. Um, so it, it may happen that these two roles, maybe the facilitator and the observer may be played only by one person, but it, then it, it becomes very demanding. Uh, if it's possible, it's better to have two different people uh, in the, to do this, uh, both, both these two tasks, and the observer will just take a note. Or in, in the absence of, of another server, you should you could record everything, and then you replay it uh, and to to extract the the, the good information, the important information. Hmm. Um, Carlo is asking if some user failures uh, are caused by the sketches you know, that are in this case too few detailed, uh, what should we do? Well, um, if we have a task driven approach, so if we already know, we, when we design the prototype, we already know what tasks are we going to ask uh, to the users, then we should be sure to put the, into the, the, the sketches all the information uh, that is relevant to these tasks. Okay, so if we leave something out, uh, then it's our fault because uh, uh, so we cannot design a prototype without knowing or without deciding which task we want to represent. Okay? So for the those tasks, uh, all the information should be there. So uh, you are using a word uh, detailed. Uh, maybe we don't need a lot of details, but we need uh, the information to be there. So we don't need a picture to be very well detailed, but at least should be a, a, a mock-up of an icon that should be recognizable, I don't know, as the person, people icon, or as the save icon, or the logout icon, or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, we can be more detailed in the part of the mock-up that we are going to test, that will cover the tasks that we are interested in, and we can be less detailed in, in, in other parts. But anyway, you are right, Carlo, that it may happen that the user is going to some part of the design that we didn't think about. They are not well designed, or maybe they are not well thought even. And uh, of course, that part uh, gives not, doesn't give us any useful information, basically. So we try to say, OK, uh, this part is interesting, but it's not what we are trying to see today hmm? and try to uh, to move the, the user back uh, to the main tracks. Mm -hmm. So, but yes, it may happen. Mm -hmm. uh, like for example, in the, you know, the, this mock-up here for the, for the terminal, maybe there is, the, you see here, they have nothing about the content of the terminal window. It's not there. No? So they don't have the risk of showing or discussing about something that has not been decided yet or not being designed yet. They are just showing a part of that. But even there may be some action were not already 
designed and so de decided or thought very well. And so we may, uh, they may be confusing uh, at some point. Uh, and you, you will just, uh, in this case, uh, try to you know, uh, move the, the user back to the main track uh, and take note that this part uh, is an interesting part to test uh, in the next. Uh, in the next iteration of the testing. Okay, so this process is quite, is quite simple if we have clear tasks and we design the prototype around those tasks. And, um, and we, if we take a lot of, and we extract a lot of information. <coughs> it should not be a confirmation that our prototype is perfect because it will not be, okay? It will be very strange for a prototype uh, tested with a user. At the end, uh, if you say everything went well, there was no problem, the user found everything because it means that the test was not performed properly, okay? Uh, usually we are testing to, to discover what the user think and what the user think about our proposal and we, I, I, I assure you that you will discover something. Um, and what can we discover? Of course, uh, first of all, we can discover whether the conceptual model, the system conceptual model was uh, received correctly by the users. So do the users understand correctly what we have in mind? And we, we cannot explain them. We can only show them a screen where the system model, the information that the system knows should be explicit, should be understandable, should be easy to deduce from the screen. If they feel lost, most of the cases is because they make their own mental model, which is different from ours, or if we didn't map correctly our mental model into the interface. I think this is the most uh, important uh, piece of information. Hmm? That, that we want to gather. Because it's the hardest, hardest thing to, to get right, especially if you are thinking of a, of a new system, of a new interface, of a new type of application. Okay, so the user may be, if we are cloning something which already exists, uh, it's easier, okay? Be because the user will have, already have some kind of experience with something similar. But if we are doing something new or different, uh, we must first uh, uh, help the users understanding what it's all about. And this is the most difficult part. And it's easy also to discover because when, when you see the, 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 the users that don't know what they are doing with the, uh, they they see a map, uh, but they don't know they don't know whether they should search something on the map or move it or whatever. So what I'm what I'm trying to what am I trying to do here? This is the, the basic question, and we want them to get it right. Then, about the functionality. So, does the interface uh, do what is needed? So, the, if the user needs to search something, do we have a search button, uh, or some feature is missing? Because the user expects some feature to be there, but it's not there, or it's hidden, maybe or it's somewhere else. So does the user find whatever is needed? Uh, whatever the user feels uh, should be the next step for this task, uh, task execution. Uh, so maybe it assumes that after entering the username, he should enter the password, for example, very stupid uh, example. And if you're not asking a password after the username, maybe there's a confusion. So wh where do I enter it? Uh, did, did it remember it uh, or do, can everybody enter? Because maybe you are just asking it in the next step, because you were in this case you were breaking a convention. Okay, and and so you will discover that because the user will expect to find some items, and in that specific screen it will not find them. And in more in general, uh, whether the users uh, find their way around the interface, so they know where to go, they understand that there are different sections or different parts uh, and different different pages have different roles, so the user can move uh, easily across different pages or screens or across different parts of the screen. Um, 
information preconditions uh, refers to the fact that the user already has all the information that it needs to have to understand a given screen. Hmm? So did we give the information before or not? Uh, do the labeling of the items uh, um, is, under, is it understood by the users? I mean, uh, if we if a button is uh, confirm or okay, is it clear what we are confirming right now? Um, if a button is uh, enter, what am I entering? Okay, so maybe we should label it uh, login, for example, or register or subscribe, which is uh, uh, more descriptive or the current action. So in many cases, we tend to use, we risk of using some jargon, some term that we understand as designers, but the user don't understand because they don't participate in the design. They are just used to whatever that button is called in many other applications, in many other websites. And so maybe the labeling that we give is confusing. Uh, the labeling that we give, uh, it's linked to some our internal procedures, internal documentation. So how many times uh, did you go to some website of you know public administration and you know that what you're searching is there but you don't know how it's called because the way it's called is totally alien language to you um no, i think thinking also of the polytechnic websites uh, that you know that something is there but you when you discover it uh, you find that it was called in a way that you would never have thought before, okay? Um, because there are in you know, different uh, technical terms uh, that the user is not always uh, expected to know. Hmm? And in that, that case, it's important that we are labeling the interface in the language of the user and not in the language of the designers. Hmm? Um, so these are the main um, information about, we see, the kind the content of the the interface and the organization the broad organization of the interface of course we can learn anything about uh, uh, look and feel uh, so colors fonts uh, the speed of, of response response times uh, uh, and so on and uh, uh, we, we can uh, so th that that part uh, of course will be for for later stage at, at this moment we are not exploring yet uh, uh, this kind of uh, look and feel or, or visual design issues uh, uh, because we are it's, it's too it's too soon okay we don't want to to spend time in in detailed visual design when we still don't know which task implementation is better and uh, uh, the paper prototype has also a good advantage that uh, whenever you need to, to change something the operator the computer simulator needs to switch papers so the user, the, the fact that something changed on the interface is very visible, is very evident. So we are in a way attracting more attention to what is changed rather than to the overall interface. And, uh, um, and then it's easier for the user to notice changes in the real interface. Maybe some change is too subtle, is too small and could not be noticed, okay? So maybe when you're submitting some form, uh, then you have a small icon that turns, uh, I don't know, from uh, red to green to say, okay, it's okay, it's, it has been confirmed, but it's so small, it's in a corner, the user will not notice it, maybe. say So uh, the user will not know, well, did I submit it or not? Because the feedback was uh, not very visible. In the paper prototype, this may not happen uh, because you are, taking a post-it notes and you're putting it in where the icon has changed. So the user will see the change, but in the real user interface, if this change is too small or is too far from where, where the, from the location where the user is expecting, maybe the user don't notice it. So this kind of design problems cannot be caught, cannot be detected by a paper prototype, of course. And, uh, um, the last point is that the users um, feel that uh, uh, playing with a paper prototype is more demanding. 
because the simulator has to switch paper and so on. And also they are observed by three people, okay? So in many cases, when you open a new application, you install a pro program and let's try what we can do. We often do some kind of exploration. Let's try to open all the menus, see what is in there and so on. So we spend some time just for orientation, I would say, okay? For getting a, a, a broad idea of what comments are there, for example. Click on the various menus, click on the icons. Uh, maybe not everybody does it, but a lot of people try to uh, to, to have a feeling of, of the of the structure of the website or of the main comments of a program or an application. So this is a normal uh, exploration of a new interface, which is not task task driven. We are not trying to accomplish any task. We are just trying to familiarize ourselves with the application by clicking randomly, let's say. Um, on a paper prototype, this is quite, uh, uh, I say, not impossible to do, but it's very unlikely, OK? First, uh, uh, because we are giving a task to the user, so the user is more focused on how do I accomplish this? Uh, we could also tell the user, you are free to explore a bit, and then we will give you a task. This is also a good idea. Let the user some free, free exploration. But when the user sees that uh, every time they click, they, there is some work needed to exchange sheets and so on, they are more likely to explore a smaller or a much smaller number of items with a paper prototype than with a real interface. So in this way, it means that a real interface uh, um, it's easier to learn because it's more open to exploration. And while a paper prototype will try to, the user you know, uh, will try to minimize the effort in using the interface and so we'll try to find the solution in, in a straight line, let's say. So this is again something that the paper prototype cannot, uh, uh, you know, is not useful to evaluate uh, whether the, uh, the the user interface is uh, open to exploration. Okay, um, exploration is a very powerful technique. Uh, uh, remember when you are programming, okay, especially in a, in an object-oriented programming language with a with a modern uh, ID. Okay, so you you never remember the names of the of all the of all the methods that you have. But you're just writing something, and when you read the dot on the object name, you get the list uh, uh, of all the possible methods. So in a way, you are learning some way some libraries by exploring the method they offer, and uh, this is something that is uh, very difficult to 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 replicate in a paper prototype. And uh, but while a lot of programming environments rely very heavily on this sort of exploration, not of the interface maybe, but on the code writing itself. So it's a technique that is very powerful, uh, but it's very difficult to replicate on, um, on paper prototypes. So we, we know that, we are aware of that, of course, we are using the paper prototype for testing other aspects, uh, <laughs> the important aspects are here, are here. And maybe we will need later on some more focused experiment, focused user test, uh, maybe on the exploration part. Hmm? So we just be, be aware that if the exploration is an important part of our um, uh, project, uh, we need uh, to use other tools also for doing that. Um, okay, so there's a lot in a piece of paper, let's say, that, that we can learn, that we can, we can try. Uh, but this also requires, uh, as we saw here, a lot of effort from our side. We need uh, to be two or three people have some well-prepared prototypes with many options, many different possible options, uh, well-defined tasks and so on. And uh, we need some sorry, some time to, to work together with the user to get a significant result. Uh, is there a way of, uh, let's say, showing a paper prototype to a user without really needing to involve a test session as so as complete as this one. Well, one possibility could be to make a video of how your paper prototype is working. 
and showing the video to other people to tell them to show them how the application is working uh, so in a way you are not showing just a static storyboard you're not letting them play with a set of paper prototypes, but you are showing uh, um, by using maybe paper prototyping or storyboarding, you are showing them a small video where a possible user is using the system. Of course, they will not, uh, uh, a video is predefined, so the user cannot interact with that, cannot decide, but at least can give their feedback about uh, the, the the usefulness of the application or the way in which some formation is is done so i have a couple of videos here just to have a, an idea sorry this was a, a a test of a messaging application okay to uh to help the user create some uh, uh more interactive uh, messages on their smartphone so it looks like this girl is using a smartphone around the campus uh, takes some pictures and it looks like a real phone up to now you know in the video so there's nothing strange up to now uh, okay it's, uh, we understood that she's taking pictures it's getting bored uh, and after a while, she want to process uh, those uh, pictures later on and uh, opens an, app an application. And here we are showing what this application concept may look like. OK, here we see that the, the phone was not a real one. And she's clicking on different actions on, uh, on prototypes. And with just, uh, just by the montage of the, diff of, of the video, we see the different uh, uh, actions that she can do. Of course, it's not a real application. There's no real swipe, uh, but uh, will help you. No? It likes, looks like you know a video uh, to present a new application, but the application is not there. Will exist only maybe uh, uh, after uh, maybe six months or so. But we, we already have the idea, and we can show what can be done in this case. So we have our idea of how the task could be performed. We have our idea of how the interface could look like, and we create the video. Of course, it's just one possible execution, one possible task, like a, a, a video, a cartoon made starting from, the, from a storyboard. So a storyboard is just pictures on paper, just a comic panels. Uh, and it will need a lot of, of imagination. And the storyboard will not usually go into the details of the user interface because it will get very boring. Uh, but in this case, uh, it's it's very now this one also is boring, it's quite long, but we get we get the idea of what can be done. Uh, you can imagine that there's a lot of work behind that. Okay, making a video, uh, doing the all the video processing, mounting, and so on, it requires a lot of time. Um, and uh, sorry, and uh, uh, the the second video that I'm showing you is uh, uh, a, a similar again about uh, uh, a new idea of, of an application. You see that in this case, there is not a real video, but it's just a, a step motion. So they took pictures and they mounted them to a video. Maybe it costs less than doing a real uh, video shooting. Uh, and right now, uh, it's starting to show some uh, some some mockups. So of course, they, it looks like a real application, but they are just pictures put there in the smartphone. Okay, uh, so it's not a real application going on. Some predefined pictures, uh, um, where again just showing the context, different users, uh, and. Uh, uh, what kind of uh, uh, interaction, what, are, what kind of, of uh, information they may show there, okay? So you see the content, you see what happens. You are telling a story, like a storyboard. In this case, it's a story made of, uh, of pictures. We are not in this video, we are not sh seeing anybody swipe or touch or doing something because they're all still pictures. It's a different style uh, um, of design. And... Uh, uh okay this is a very strange application where you are 
make you are walking many steps uh, and you are donating these steps uh, to a to a general cause so it's uh, something that is a very american thing to do <coughs> and uh, um, so that was a, a, another possible option hmm? uh, we, we, the user, of course, cannot interact, cannot uh, uh, explore. And, uh, you may decide whether your fidelity is just low or medium or high. You see that the, the, the second video is, is more a medium fidelity because you already have tried to have some pictures. The first one was low fidelity with, uh, with paper. Um, it takes probably less time to create uh, and it's more for uh, uh, testing ideas uh, and the second one tries to feel more realistic uh, of course if you're putting more time or investment uh, uh, you know that you are going to make a few of uh, fewer of them and if you're making fewer you cannot explore too much the different design options so it's for getting more details about this design uh, option so uh, it's uh, they're nice they're cool they're good for let's say marketing for sharing the idea uh, they are not very good for getting feedback, of course, from users, because when the users are, are able to touch it uh, uh, and to try it, uh, they will give a lot of feedback more. Um, but at the same time, it, once you did the video, you can also show it maybe to different, not hundreds, of, not thousands of people, because it wouldn't make much sense, but 10 or 20 or 30 people in the, at the same time and get some quick feedback, uh, feedback uh, a questionnaire, some questions, some uh, short answers from them without a full uh, uh, usability session with a paper prototype. So in a way, it's a tool that requires a stronger front uh, upfront investment before to create it, but then it will be cheaper to involve users. Of course, you will get less, less uh, more shallow, less deep information rather than we, uh, compared to, um, to a paper prototype. Uh, of course, you should choose very well the important tasks. So nobody wants to see a video of a person registering to a website. Please kill me before, okay? Uh, and uh, try to focus on the real key tasks of your system that are different from the task of other systems. So nobody wants you to see to write a post, which is the same as writing a post on Facebook, the same as writing a post on Instagram, the same as writing a post on Twitter. And what's the novelty there? The user will not feel, will not see, will not understand what you are trying to propose them no, in those cases. And so uh, the, the, the key tasks uh, should be shown or and the tasks that you, you already selected during the observation phase. No? Because you, during the observation, maybe there are some tasks that were important to you. And so you want to compare what you observed with the real users to what uh, you are proposing the new system to do. And so you are showing that the, sa the same task, um, the same task is uh, uh, implemented in a different way, supported in a different way with our system. So our sentence, we want to support users too okay we are showing how we're showing that okay, we are now supporting you in this way hmm? um, the mvp is a marketing term for minimum viable product viable product so uh the the a product with a minimum amount of features that uh, could be ready to be sold could be ready for the market so what is the if you want to launch a new product you should not wait to have a fully complete product and then uh, okay, have, have it only after seven years, but uh, um, try to try to start small and then get feedback, get some first customers maybe, and then grow it. So identifying which is the minimum set of functionalities that the, would make the users buy the system or use the system. Okay, so you can show the tasks and uh, try to understand whether the users are willing to pay for having those tasks implemented. Or some of them are not so important, so could be left out in the first version, or some of them are missing, and so you should really include them uh, before you try to launch your product. It's also something that should involve the marketing department in some, in some way, so to help define what is the value proposition or the market proposition 
for your new product. And uh, so you see that it's also very useful as before for the design team, not just for the for the user testing. And uh, say so always we should always discuss in a, a good way rather than argue uh, violently in some way. Okay, we have some hints here, but I won't go into details about uh, uh, the creation of, of a video prototype. Uh, I won't go into much details because we are not uh, expecting to use these techniques uh, in, in our project. Uh, um, it's uh, the, the, the basic risk is uh, that you want to do it uh, too nice. It's not an, an ad, it's not an advertisement, it's not a, uh, you know, a marketing tool. It's a design tool, okay? So let's not make it with fancy technologies, with high resolution, with uh, uh, on purpose, you should use low technology or simple devices uh, and don't care about uh, something that the, uh, the, you know, the, the image would not be perfect and the color would not be perfect. We, we don't care really, okay? Because increasing the quality of a video from 10% to 50% will require you maybe 10 times more the investment or the time because it's really a hard task to do we are not directors we are not uh, we don't have the um, all the know-hows and all the skills we it should not be thought as a professional product this is the, the biggest risk trying to do it uh, too nice and too perfect okay and uh, so try to make it as much as possible just live videos and uh, and maybe try, try to combine your short segment but keep editing and also shooting to a minimum. What is important again is the context. Who is doing what and why? Who, the user, what, the context, and why, the goal. These are uh, the information that we can extract uh, in this case. Uh, and uh, the, probably the most important aspect is audio. So try not to have background noises or something like that. Um, it's also difficult to get a good audio. And, uh, and also maybe uh, you have already heard a lot of videos where the voice that narrates the video is a bad voice with a bad accent or whatever. We are not professional actors. Uh, so in many cases, it's better to make it silent, maybe to have some titles. Uh, like in the first video that we shown, there was the girl and uh, some sentences appeared to explain what she was doing. She didn't talk. Nobody talked in that video. Maybe a soft uh, background music, but then all of that was just, uh, uh, you know, a mute video, silent video. Um, uh, okay. And uh, of course, some, some of this interface will be shown the, and some of the, of the context. So you should decide whether you focus on the context on the environment, uh, where the person is walking and so on, and how much you focus on the interface. Uh, and in that case, it should be more real looking, but also a paper prototype is enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's also possible to make a video that doesn't show at all the interface. Huh? Uh, it only shows the actions of the user, like with storyboards, it's the same. So it's a video storyboard in a way. Mm -hmm. The difference is that a storyboard should take 20 minutes to draw, 10 minutes to draw, a video will take two days minimum. Um, OK. Uh, and basically, why do you want to do that? Uh, of course, it's uh, great for communicating, for showing people what you had in mind more than a PowerPoint presentation or something like that. Uh, easy to share. And uh, um, in the, yes, it's it's good to explore the context of use especially people in context using the application it's one you see the benefits here the goals are very much uh, similar to other type of prototypes so they are all tools that in a way can be combined can be shared and so on okay moving um, forward uh, we may Right now, we only have some very sketchy and low fidelity prototypes from the visual point of view. And it's OK, because we were focusing on the task, on the context, and on the content in, of the interface. But when we move forward 
towards the end of the product, we should start at, at this point to fix or to reason about the actual interface. Sooner or later, we should decide whether to put a, that, that button in the top right or in the bottom right corner of our interface. So uh, when once the tasks are defined as been tested, have been refined with the users, thanks to the paper prototypes, for example, then we should move, move to the design or uh, of the interface. So something maybe on a computer screen, not no longer on paper, we put it in a computer screen and we try to render the user interface more similar, maybe not totally, but more similar to the final one. And maybe if I have a computer, maybe this computer can also respond to some user action. So if the user clicks it, the, really the interface changes. For real or for fake, okay? Maybe it's, just a, it's not a real change, it's just a predefined screenshot like with paper prototypes, but it feels more really, it feels more real because it's on, on, on screen. Um, so in this case, we are moving to a higher fidelity in look and feel, and of course, a lower fidelity in depth of the interaction. Because if we have something on a computer screen, we don't have the human operator behind that, that will make intelligent choices. Uh, the computer can only show you some predefined shots uh, that have been defined before, but those will look better. So again, it's a complementary tool. Uh, in this case, uh, these sort of prototypes are sometimes called the mockups of the interface or uh, wireframe interfaces because it just uh, you are just drawing in many cases just uh, uh, the outside lines of the different elements, like you are creating a model, a physical model with a wireframe. Uh, the real metal uh, wireframe, okay? The, the, the metal wire, uh, let's say. Uh, you, we may design or focus on a single screen, like a single sketch, but with a higher quality, or a set of screens, uh, like uh, an animation or a storyboard or, or uh, pages connected by links, in a way. And uh, uh, usually we try to convey the information that this is still an ongoing interface design. And so we want to make it look not finished. We don't want the user to think that this is the final version because again, on the final version, they will give less feedback than on a preliminary one. And that's why we are trying to write, even if we are drawing them on a computer, we are using an imprecise drawing or a drawing style that conveys some uh, preliminary aspect. Okay, especially black and white, no color usually. And uh, usually to, not to make it too complex because we don't want to implement any backend logic. It's may, in many cases, they are static pages, uh, predefined pages. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, these pages should be put in context of, a, of which is the device no? where they will appear. <clears throat> this is sort of layout in a way so called wireframe, so you just uh, lines around and you see that this the first one, of course, it's a web page no? because we see it in the buttons uh, for a browser. Abstract, they are abstract one, they, we don't need the real uh, buttons for a real browser, just enough that the user understands that the application here will live inside a web window or will live inside a, an operating system window. So it will be an application program installed on the desktop or on a mobile interface. We just need some hint of a context. So it's not uh, the quality here is not much higher than a paper prototype. The difference is that it's designed to be interacted on screen and not on paper. And so with this uh, uh, sort of tools, we can create uh, a, a mock-up, let's say a, a, a preliminary version, a medium quality sketch of our user interface. There are several mock-up tools. So this is just one of them which is uh, working uh, online, but you, if you search, you find a dozen of different uh, uh, tools with different prices or different features uh, that usually come with a library of symbols, you know, the menus, the buttons, uh, the dialogues and so on. They can just drag and drop into your interface uh, to create uh, the look and feel of your um, in this case, it's a, it's a web page for your web application. So you have the tabs, uh, 
you have uh, the search boxes, your image boxes, and so on. So it's still medium quality because we don't have a real image, we don't have real fonts, we don't have uh, uh, colors and so on. But at least we have a good idea of the layout of the interface. It's, it's better than, uh, than on, on paper. It's more, uh, it's, you see that it's more advanced. Um, and it's, uh, it's in a computer, so we can use that uh, for presenting to the users. And in most of these tools, you can create hotspots or buttons where if the user clicks on some part of the interface, then it will switch to a different mockup, to a different page. So you, uh, you may give the impression of a real interaction because you click here, you, you see a new page, you click there, you see a new page. The only difference is that all of these pages are predefined, like in a static website. You only have those pages to show, but you can create a navigation between those. And so you are preparing, you know, the pages that you need for your uh, task execution, and you see whether the user is actually uh, executing them in the right order and so on. It's less flexible than with paper because with paper we have the operator that may adapt or change on the fly according to what the user is doing, especially if the user is doing the wrong thing. Here, uh, it's, it's less flexible, but it's more precise. So you can extract more information about the detailed information that is on the, on the screen. And also creating this kind of mockups is quite fast because we have a very wide design libraries in all these tools have a libraries where you can just pick and, and drag and drop interface elements to, to create in an, in a couple of minutes, uh, even complex pages. Hmm. Um, it's not a real layout like you had to do, to do maybe in HTML and CSS and align everything and so on. It will take you uh, one day to create uh, one page if you are lucky. Hmm. So it's it's uh, it's faster. It, you know you have components for showing a map, for showing an avatar or whatever, video controls. Uh, you have a lot of a lot of these uh, items in your library so that you can put them together quite quickly. They will not be perfect. They will not be identical to the real widgets of your operating system of or, or of your smartphone, but we don't care basically, okay? In some cases, we have an you know, application with uh, these stances. So images to be dropped and to be to compose your screenshot. So you have uh, an empty phone where you can drag, some, drag something. And here we have some example of these uh, tools that I found uh, to uh, to develop this kind of of, uh, of prototype or mockups. Mm -hmm. So in in this case we can be more detailed about the content of this interface and which specific controls and specific, which specific layouts uh, we want to implement, and also the navigation. So this is an example taken from another exam that I gave. Um, where we were uh, defining the, the, the steps for implementing a use case uh, in, I don't know, I don't remember, uh, a vaccination application, for example. Okay, it was all before coronavirus, so it was uh, not, not so, pro not so uh, hard as a problem. Um, but uh, we prepared a set of possible web pages. You see that here we have the icon and the title of, of the web page which is just blurry text. We didn't, as an exercise, we didn't care, we didn't need to define a very catchy and fine and nice uh, title for the web page. So let's just give the impression here, we will have a title and here we will have a logo. Well, that's for later to decide, so for later for, for to design. But we focused uh, on, on the text, uh, on the, uh, the, the table, uh, on the buttons, on the calendar and so on. And uh, all these pages were linked so that when the user clicks on some button, it will go to the proper page and so on. So it's a set of static pages, but it already may already give the impression of the navigation. You can test this in a very similar way as you would do with a paper prototype. And again, the important part is check <clears throat> what actions the user are doing, what mistakes the user are making, and uh, 
what is the feedback, you know, the voice or feedback that they give while they're thinking and while they are interacting. Uh, there can be also very lower, uh, uh, low level, low technology, say mockups. For example, this is a, is a very old uh, picture for a concept of a possible smartphone. We know that then the smartphone took a completely different direction from this. And uh, uh, this was just done with PowerPoint. Uh, PowerPoint, because you, you just draw the pictures and then you have the possibility in PowerPoint to, to make a button to link to a different page. So any shape in PowerPoint can be a link to a different page. So you can create a minimum of animation just by using PowerPoint, a set of uh, images that you prepare in different pages. So the, this PowerPoint presentation will not be shown from slide one to slide 27, but the user will click and the presentation will jump. So it's a very low effort solution for creating something that will give the impression of uh, being interactive in some way. Interactive up to a limit, of course, because the only action that you can do usually in this kind of interfaces is clicking on elements, uh, on some of the elements where we predefined a, a link. And so the text entry, if you want to enter text, you just sort of pretend to do that. You know, you see um, a text box, uh, you, you cannot write into that. You can only look at it and understand, okay, here I need to write something, but you don't really write. Um, so all the widgets are not just are just pictures. They are not active. There. So a paper prototype is more active. Uh, a wireframe is more for looking and checking whether we understand what is on the screen. Um, we have uh, uh, basically two questions in our mind when we interact with a draw, with a wireframe. Do I understand the information that is coming to me? Do you understand what, what the content on the interface means? And second, do I understand what actions I could do on this page? What are the clickable buttons? What are the clickable actions and so on? Uh, so it is more uh, on the decoding or the user interface by the user to understand what is the role, what is the meaning of every element and what are the actions that can be done on the different elements. This is something that wireframes are, are good to, do, are good to, to explore and less uh, the interactive part. And of course, if we go forward, uh, we, can, we may have uh, real high fidelity prototypes. So if you take a, um, a mock-up and you try to design, uh, uh, design it with a graphical uh, design tool or in a web page, a real web page without maybe the, the backend, without the application logic, but with a layout uh, that it looks like the final one, with a good choice of color, with a good choice of icons, graphics, dividers, shadows, and whatever we want to make it nicer, look nicer. Um, we, uh, we we will get some some prototype with, which is much closer. That's why we call it high fidelity. It's closer to the final version. Okay. Um, of course, they are more expensive to build because you need to use a real design tool. Hmm? There are some of them. You know, uh, on, on the Mac world, there's an application called Sketch. Uh, right now, there's a, a very famous tool called Figma, which is a web application uh, for designing web pages. But, uh, you know, for, for getting a, a complete web page uh, finished, uh, you will need hours of work. It's not just a drag and drop like with the wireframes, because you need to sweat all the pixels, all the spacing, all the shadows, and so on. And because it will be you know, a, a real screenshot or maybe in some cases you can write a real code so you put some html some css you put some .NET widgets uh, and and you create a, a real web page or a real application page that looks like what you want and so in this case you are using real widgets and not just images or libraries taken from a design tool it will take time but then you will have a, a, a final looking uh, uh, display. So you see the difference from this screenshot here and uh, the one that you can get with a with a wireframe tool. More or less, the tools are the same because we, they have the libraries of symbols, uh, but they also have all the tools for changing colors, borders, shadows, and so on that before we didn't have. And so we are adding this complexity because we need to have a, a visually perfect web page. Of course, it will be important because after we 
you know, the paper prototype is useful for setting the task right. The wireframe is useful for setting the interface elements right. And then the high fidelity prototype is needed for setting the color, the shape, and the uh, and the feedback of the of the different parts of the page also right. So at different stages, we are interested in different uh, uh, elements. Of course, the design should come later because we it doesn't make sense to make a, a good or detailed design until we know exactly what should be on the pages, because otherwise we are doing a lot of work and then we need to change it altogether. And maybe and also the, the the definition of the logos of the colors and so on usually takes a different path, which is more on the marketing and communication departments that has nothing to do with the real usability or the technical design of the, of the system. So when we have the information about the final layout, we could try to match our wireframes into or re rebuild our wireframes into the design tool to have a look at the final the final visual aspect of our application and of course at this at this stage we can really understand whether the screen layout is clear understandable is there is too much contact content too many distractions or the user can easily find the the, the element that they, they need to find that we know they need to find whether the combination of colors and fonts are nice to look at they are coherent they are not uh, there are not too many fonts or not too few uh, colors and so on and uh, uh, and at this point we may have the real uh, visual feedbacks from from the the application so a button can be pushed a menu item can be highlighted and we see how the user could respond to these visual cues uh, to the visual suggestions of uh, of the actions behind the uh, user interface and if something changes, do the users notice it? If something has been selected, can the users understand that it's selected? Can the users understand in which section of the website they are? And all of these are information that in many cases we are getting through colors, huh? colors or shadows or highlighting, which is something that we didn't have before. So we are introducing them. We are giving more context, more information to the users, and we can test and check whether they are decoding this information correctly. And this means that we encoded that correctly for them. And uh, also some uh, check whether some controls are easy or difficult to use. So you open a checkbox, this checkbox has 2000 items. So it's very difficult to find the right one, for example, or two black buttons are too close because they are too small. And so the users, while interacting with that, uh, they uh, they often you know, mistake one for the other or something like that. Hmm? Also, the colors, uh, people will be the, with the sight problems, visual problems, uh, maybe a difficulty in finding some colors, see if some items don't have enough contrast and so on. Hmm? So all these aspects. Uh, but uh, when we are at this stage, usually we should not be discussing anymore what information should be on the screen and nor uh, what sequence of, info, of of pages that we should show. Huh? We should, it should already be fixed before. Of course, we probably will discover also some mistakes later, but at this stage, we should uh, more work, work more on the on the visual aspect uh, um, of the of, of the application. And here we have uh, so uh, and some example. Uh, you see that today there's a lot of traction uh, around this Figma tool. A lot of designers are using that. Uh, I tried to use that, but I got lost because it's really a, a detailed design tool. While the wireframing tools are much, uh, much faster to to use and, and to produce good results, even if you are not a good visual designer. Mm -hmm. um, if you want, you can have a look at this video, which is nice because uh, in the first half of the video, it looks like you're looking at a real project. So they use this technique for creating high fidelity prototypes for tricking you into be believing that this, the product is finished while it really wasn't. And, and so to get feedback for the users saying, okay, this is the application, what do you think? And then say, okay, this was not a real application, it was just a test for understanding your opinion. 
Okay, uh, we still have one type of prototype uh, to, to cover, uh, but I think the, the time for today is over. And so I don't want to overshoot uh, the allowed time. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll spend uh, five, five minutes uh, on, the, um, uh, on this topic in the, in the next week. It's just an advanced technique for, um, let's say, animating a, 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 a computer prototype when the computer is not powerful enough for, uh, for actually doing that kind of, of job. And so you are faking totally uh, the, the, the interaction, okay? But we'll, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a simple technique that may be used in some, in some specific cases. Um, but we discuss that uh, next uh, next Tuesday. If you if you haven't seen or haven't read the the, the story of the White of Oz, uh, I suggest that you can look at that. It's just a very nice movie back from the 70s or the 80s. So it's a, it's a very old movie, but uh, the story is well described. And especially in the moment when they interact with the real White uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, really nice to see, and it maps quite uh, uh, sorry, quite well with uh, what we are saying here in the in the ACI domain. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this uh, last part will be left for uh, for next uh, Tuesday, and uh, okay, uh, today we are we are finished, and uh, have a nice work tomorrow in the lab, in the two the in the two in the two labs uh, and. Um, the, the, the presence ones and the, and the online one and just remember that okay you are close let's say to 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 um, to close let's say the, the the need finding phase and it's also it's very important because it will determine everything that follows so try to be careful in the observation and the interviews and uh, i think that's all for today and uh, thank you and see you next week if you have any question, of course, uh, we can find on Slack. Bye-bye. Thank you.